Hey, welcome to Hannity on this busy breaking news night. Now, tonight and every night, this program, we bring you important information that we're pretty confident you're not going to get anywhere else from the media mob. Uh, this show, I am a member of the press. I am a talk show host. I embrace as a talk show host many roles. Um, I like to say this show is like the entire newspaper. We do plenty of hard news. In other words, no opinion whatsoever. I can produce thousands and thousands of hours of it. Groundbreaking investigative reporting, radical associations of Obama, the deep state. We talk about sports. We talk about culture. We talk about entertainment. And yes, I give my opinion on the issues of the day, like an op-ed page, an editorial page. And this is important. I am upfront, we on this show are upfront and honest about this program and having a conservative perspective. I believe in the things I'm passionate about. Unfortunately, though, well, the vast majority of people in the media, they are not upfront and they are not honest. They pretend to be fair and balanced and, and pretend to bring you only the truth with no opinion. They pretend their opinions are actually facts, and they're not. They even sometimes refer to themselves as, quote, fact checkers that need a fact checking. But almost all so-called journalists on other network and cable news shows, they're liberal socialist Democrats. They're an extension of all things the New Green Deal radical socialists. They are biased. They are partisan. They are political operatives. Take fake Jake Tapper, George Stephanopoulos. They actually work for Democrats before transitioning, becoming newsmen. And what, they left their opinion at the door? No, I'm not buying it. Every day, you have these hacks trying to shape public opinion, but under the guise of journalism, one of their favorite methods, by the way, is called bias of omission. For example, let's just take a look at Hunter Biden's laptop from hell. Now, this week, the Daily Mail uncovered numerous texts from that laptop. It featured Hunter Biden's frequent use of the N-word. Hunter repeatedly called his white lawyer the N-word, quote, N-word, you better not be charging me Hennessy rates, and quote, well, that's what I'm saying, N-word, true that N-word. Hunter even sent around a meme referring to Barack Obama, former president, as the N-word. This is obviously de despicable, racist language. Remember the mob and the media, they've been obsessed with all things race and racism for years. So you might think this is a huge deal. A couple of weeks ago, well, it was last week, as a matter of fact, Joe was reminding us that racism is the biggest threat to this country. Okay? Now, don't forget the media was outraged. Remember NASCAR driver Kyle Larson for using similar language? The media was outspoken. They were outraged at the country music star Morgan Wallen. He used the N-word. Also outraged at Major League Soccer coach for singing along with a song that had N-word in the lyrics. But for the 50-year-old crack-smoking, influence-peddling son of the president of the United States, no outrage whatsoever, none, zero, zip. As a matter of fact, as of late this afternoon, there was zero mentions of Hunter using the N-word on fake news CNN, MSDNC, ABC, CBS, NBC. Wasn't in the Washington Post, wasn't in the New York Times, not a word. But for five plus years, these same so-called objective news outlets, well, they saw racism around every corner, every statement from President Trump, even if they had to slice, dice, and edit, like in the case of Charlottesville, which we talked a lot about. Take a look. It should come as no surprise uh, that we grapple every day with what it means to have a president stained by racism. A news organization says that it is perfectly fine to call Donald Trump racist. We can surely say his words have absolutely emboldened white supremacists. He has given oxygen to racists. He is clearly trying to ignite a civil war in this country. See, the question is, what do you call someone who says clearly racist things? This morning, the answer is Mr. President. A lot of people are leveling a very serious charge at him, so I ask him about it. Are you racist? I am the least racist person that you have ever met. So if I'm not mistaken, the media mob thinks everything Donald Trump or a conservative does or a Republican does is racist. But if you're a Biden and you use the N-word or you openly worry about, quote, 
uh, public schools becoming, quote, racial jungles and try to stop integration of our public school system and stop busing, uh, the liberal media, you get a pass. And even worse, if you're an African-American Republican, well, you can go on fake news, CNN. You better be prepared to be attacked. And today, Republican Congressman Byron Donalds, he appeared on fake news, CNN, to discuss the Congressional Black Caucus, apparently blocking him from joining. Now, the indignant CNN fake news host, who apparently thinks that she speaks for the entire African-American community, accused Donalds of being out of step with their cause. I guess the expert on all these matters, you decide. Do you think that your defense of a person that said things like that might be incongruent with the mission of the CBC? Uh, first of all, whatever the president said in the past, it's nothing to do with this discussion at all. I think well, you've, defend, you've defended a, him. You've defended uh, please him. don't cut me off. I, didn't, I have not cut you off in this interview. Please do not do that to me. Thank you. As a black man in America, I'm allowed to have my own thoughts on who I choose to support and who I choose not to support. My support for President Trump, uh, whether it's for or against, is irrelevant. That has nothing to do with this discussion. This is whether the uh, ideology of somebody who is conservative is welcome in the Congressional Black Caucus. It's really that simple. Checkmate. Now, by the way, is it called the Congressional Black Caucus or the Congressional Liberal Black Caucus? Because you see what's happening here. Fake news, CNN, almost every other outlet. Narrative is more important than truth. They have an agenda. Their long-running narrative is Republicans are evil, racist monsters. Uh, they don't want you to know that President Trump signed off, oh, on the bill that permanently provided more money to historically black colleges than any other president, $250 million a year. I doubt they gave Trump a lot of credit when he signed the First Step Act, reducing the incarceration of many minorities serving lengthy sentences for nonviolent crimes, oh, overturning Joe Joe Biden's crime bill. Uh, they don't want you to know that under Trump, more African American, Hispanic Americans were employed with the lowest unemployment rates, record after record after record shattered. The media mob, Democrats, want you to believe that President Trump is an evil, heartless monster who forcibly cleared peaceful Black Lives Matter protesters from Lafayette Square Park so that he could get a photo op in front of historic St. John's Church. You might remember this. When they um, dispersed protesters in Lafayette Park the other day when the president wanted his photo op. Police fired tear gas on peaceful protests outside the White House, all so Donald Trump could stage a photo op. Because the president literally wanted a photo op after all this tear gas had been sprayed on U.S. American citizens. Last night, those peaceful protesters in D.C. were cleared from the park, you'll remember, so that President Trump could walk across the street to St. John's Church for a photo op. The United States government does not use the military against civilians in this country unless there's a damn good reason. Well, and all we ended up with was what the, the president of the United States looking like a wannabe dictator Right. Uh, so he could walk over to, over to a church and right. pretend to be concerned about the church. Well, guess what? None of that was true. All of what they said were lies, just like three years, Trump, Russia collusion. They lied to the entire country. According to a brand new Inspector General report, U.S. Park Police were already in the process of clearing the park before they ever learned about Donald Trump's visit to the church. They were dispersing demonstrators to install new fencing before Donald Trump went there, after the protest became violent and the church was lit on fire. But according to America's genius journalist, Trump bad, Republicans bad, conservatives bad, rioters good. Even today, a perplexed fake news Jim Ocasta. He just couldn't admit the truth even now. Take a look. Well, I certainly think it raises more questions than it answers. I mean, you know, the, the IG report is saying that the park police cleared the park with the purpose of setting up this fence. When I read through this report, it sounded as if this inspector general was auditioning to become the inspector general at Mar-a-Lago because, I mean, this is almost a whitewash of what occurred on June 1st. Jim Acosta is auditioning to be the leader of AOC squad because he's that far radical left. Uh, you'll get the truth from Jim, unless it fits his liberal, radical, democratic, socialist narrative. Like so many journalists in the mob, though, 
you know, fake news Acosta, his support for the Democratic Party is far more important than actually telling you, the American people, the truth. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.